All right, everybody. Intro to Bert. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, today I'm just going to start with uh, kind of an intro to Bert. I'm going to focus on the free version, so I'll try not to go into any pay options. I don't know how familiar people are with Burp. Uh, idea is that I'll start out with some basics. If people are interested, I can do more talks later. We can get, we can get into things like bypassing CRSR, uh, RF tokens, doing macros for logins, that kind of stuff later. Uh, so a little bit about me really quick, two things. I talk fast, uh, even faster if I'm nervous. I don't talk in front of people a lot. And then the other thing is, is I use Burp every day. I spend probably 40 hours a week in Burp, and I've been doing pen testing for the past five years. So if I say something or gloss over something, <coughs> you have a question, just stop me. Uh, it's probably because I'm just ignoring something. So, oh, and quick out, I'll give a shout out to Hack the Box. They are a free uh, capture flag kind of thing. Uh, they're letting me use one of their old retired boxes uh, for free. They hooked me up with a mod uh, VPN token so I can get into their moderator thing and hit any box I want, so I appreciate that. Uh, free or you can pay if you'd like. So. Uh, I'll start off with Burp here. I have to find the freebie. I do pay for Burp also myself. My company pays for it. I also pay for a personal license. Uh, what is it? It's like two ninety nine. Three fifty. Three fifty. Three fifty a year. Yeah. And if you don't, and it is a subscription. If you don't pay, uh, it does end. It doesn't just keep going. Uh, to me, uh, I don't know. to me, it's worth it. But I live in it. Uh, so first off, the very first. Uh, crippling you're going to see with the uh, free version, you can't do like the project files. Uh, if you're not in web app testing, probably not that big of a deal. Uh, so let's do the temporary one here. Uh, you can do configuration files. I'll talk about that a little bit in a second. Uh, while that loads up, just a quick thing about Burp, if you don't even know what it is, period. It's just a pretty much a man in the middle proxy that you, look, you host on yourself. Uh, I'm going to direct all web traffic through it so I can see the request and the responses to a web application that I'm testing. Uh, you actually would be surprised at how many developers have never seen this stuff. I've done phone calls with web developers, and I'll show them the, the response code, and they'll ask me how I got that. Like, how did you how did you see that? Uh, so that's always shocking to me when you're a developer, uh, but it happens. So, anyways, this is the main interface for Burp. It's Java based. Everybody has their own opinions about Java apps. I will say it loves your RAM. Whatever you give it, it will take. Uh, there's a configuration file where you can kind of control rein that in if you want. Uh, but if I want to, I, I typically do uh, week long pen tests. I, I'll give it usually half my RAM of my system to eat up if it wants to. Uh, if you use project files, uh, I have project files that are over four or five gig, so those can get big too. Uh, nowadays, they do have an installer, it makes it pretty nice. You don't even need to worry about what version of Java you're running. Uh, it's just double click and install. Uh, the free version is actually free, I believe, to anybody. I don't think there's any real rules on it, on who you can use it, on what you can use it for. Uh, all they do is hamper some of the things, and like I said, I'll talk about a few of those as we go. So, anyways, when you launch it, this is your opening screen. Uh, there's not a lot to see here just yet. I'll actually load the site here in a second just so we can see some traffic. Uh, but I always point this out. Let me put that. Oh. Just because everything these days has to have, it has to have a store. Uh, Burp does have an app store. You can actually download extensions. Uh, really? Oh, yeah, here it is. There's a ton of them. Uh, and they will tell you, hold on, somewhere. Are those extensions free, like all? Or no, so they're, they're all free. Okay. But some of them require a pro version. Okay. So. Is it just in the details? Yeah, I think so. The detail column requires verb suite dot dot dot. Ah, that might be it. This one's pro. Yep. Yeah. So anything over here, that requires verb professional. Uh, that's likely not because they're trying to make money. It's likely using a, a feature of the API that requires verb pro uh, to use. Uh, there's a ton of these things. Uh, this is a default install I'm using from Kali, so nothing's installed. I'm not using any extensions. Uh, but there are some useful ones, so if you get into Burp, definitely explore this. Uh, there's some on there here that are really useful. Do you favorite? Yeah. I have ones that I can't live without, probably. Uh, where is it? Uh, Flow is a really good one. Yeah, it's free. Uh, it's nice because it will actually, it's kind of a resource hog, but when you need it, it'll log every uh, request and response from any part of Burp. So 
whether your proxy's doing it, your spider's doing it, your scanner's doing it, intruder's doing it, it's recording the requests and responses. Uh, so it's nice if you have something going wrong, you can pull a log and just to see what it was. Uh, there are, it's not perfect. If you have some things, I'll show you in a second, if you have some auto modifiers on, low brakes, uh, that's a burp issue. Uh, there's some pretty, there's some ones that do like espresso that, that does what that works with your uh, single sign on type things. They'll just highlight those for you to help catch that. Uh, I need a freebie to use. Uh, that's all safe for now because I think a lot of the ones I use probably require the paid version. Uh, if you were to write your own extension, is there some language or does Burp have its own? Yeah, Burp has its own. It's actually pretty easy. They have tons of uh, examples online for you. Uh, it's not too difficult to do. Okay. Oh, they they use, what's that? I was going to say they have an API and you can write in either Ruby or Python or Java. Okay. Yeah. As you'll see, if you do like the options, some of them will require Java, some require mm -hmm. Python, some require Ruby. Based on whatever extension to install, they'll tell you what, what it needs. Uh, uh, the Python, there's a couple of Python extensions that are really nice that'll actually, you can just like right click a request, it'll put it into Python code for you. That can be nice if you want to read, if you want to do some scripting on a call. Uh, so, anyways, there's other, there are a lot of ones that will work with the free version, but some of the better ones work with pay, just because of the burps restriction on the API. Uh, so, from there, I will go ahead and uh, launch a browser really fast, just so I can get some traffic in here. Uh, for so, to set up a proxy on your web browser, they all have different ways. Uh, I in Firefox is my main testing. Uh, I just I'm a fan of Foxy Proxy, so maybe it, it's nice, it's easy, it's pretty. Uh, and I should say, when you first launch Burp, the most important tab you're going to want to go to is the Options tab right at the back. This is going to tell you where Burp is listening. That's by default. You can configure more interfaces if you want. Uh, currently, it's just going to listen on your local host, 8080. If you want to make it available to your network, you can put it on your public IP, whatever you want to do. Uh, but you're going to need that information when you do the proxy to know where it's going. So I'm going to hit up this retired half the box, make sure my VPN is still good. And it's already grabbing things. So one thing that you'll notice with Burp, if you ever, if it's your first time in it, and you launch a browser, you're going to see requests for things you probably don't even know are happening. Like this, for example, this is a Firefox call. It's so uh, let's see, I can't see it very well. It's doing an uh, update XML. It's probably checking for updates to see if there's a new version. Uh, these things can get annoying, especially if you're doing a test. So one of the nice things about Burp, you can right click and go down to Don't intercept requests and say to this host, and it'll ignore this host going forward. Uh, now this is the host that I actually put in, 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10. Uh, if you ever do hack the box, the box is called 10.10, so it's pretty easy to remember. So if you notice, and then you can see it loaded over here. So one thing that I don't like about Burp's default is it doesn't ever re intercept responses by default. So the other first thing that I always change is under options, for your proxy, you have a number of options here. I'll start off with the first here at the top, actually. This is your client requests. This is what Burp is going to intercept. So by default, it will ignore your, your, your image files, your uh, CSS files, JavaScript files. It's going to ignore those things. Uh, depending on what you're doing, you might want to leave that on. For me, I do testing. I usually turn that off. I, need to, I want to see everything that's happening. Uh, the other thing, this was not by default. This domain, that's what I just added when I said ignore this host from here on out. So it doesn't get saved permanently, that's just saved for this one test. And then you can add your own. They have some other defaults here that if you want to play with, you can add. Uh, the next one that's important is intercept server responses. Bird by default does not have this enabled. Uh, I always enable that, that's enabled with my config. Uh, that's just so you can see what the application is sending back to you. Uh, it's just going to capture it. Mind you, it's all getting logged, but if you want to actually see it in real time, it'll capture it for you. Uh, and for enabled, these are your rules of what it'll do. You can do ORs and ANDs. You can make it pretty specific to what you want to capture. Uh, I typically just 
when it, if I capture the intercept, I want to capture the response. That's my default setting for that. Uh, WebSocket messages, it's a little advanced. We'll worry about that another time. Uh, I'll jump down here to this match and replace just because this is a nice thing to have. This match and replace will you can configure it to match requests. Anything in a request or anything in a response you want to auto modify. So you don't have to do it manually. So some of the things you might want to do is, and these are all pre-populated, you can go ahead and make your browser look like IE. So it's going to take every request you send and change the user agent to look like Internet Explorer. That's good for some applications that demand you have Internet Explorer, demand you have a certain version of something. Uh, if you want to always, if you want to not worry about cache responses, you can go ahead and turn that on to always remove the cache setting. Are those uh, default ones or? These are all defaults that are included. Okay. Uh, they they change the set cookies. Uh, anything enabled, I mean, anything you have to check it to enable it, but by default, nothing is enabled. Uh, and then you can also write your own. And you can get pretty specific. So you can do request header, body, uh, response, request first line. You can change anything there. And regex, so you can have a field there with whatever you want to change automatically. As I was saying before about extensions, if you use Flow, if you auto modify something, Flow breaks because you issue a request, Burp intercepts it, and it actually is another request. So the request <coughs> and response get out of, out of whack. So be careful with the extensions you use. Sometimes they don't operate like you think they're going to. And now, oh, see, here's another request. I didn't initiate this. This is. Firefox again, doing a block request. Uh, if you do any kind of web app testing long term, you're going to learn how much Firefox does and work on cleaning it up because it does a lot. And now you see I'm capturing responses. This is the first response we've seen. That's from Firefox, it's a 301 move. Okay. So, now I'll start back in the first tab here. This is the target tab. This is every host that Burp has seen passively, just picking up as your browser's been working. Uh, the nice thing here you can do is this is the only host I care about. That's all I'm testing right now. If you right click on this, you can say add to scope. Uh, this is a warning. Oh, yeah, there are, you can set it up to only save what's in scope or to save everything. Uh, saving in scope just helps you keep your file smaller. Anyways, that'll push it over to here, and now you can see your target scope. They put it in there for me by itself. You can go ahead and edit that to be HTTP, HTTPS, or just remove the HTTP and capture both, encrypted and unencrypted. Uh, this is actually a new feature. Uh, this simple one is. They still have this advanced control you can do. It lets you do regex settings, and you can get more granular than at that point. Uh, just to note, advanced scope, uh, when you start adding in regexes, more system intensive, more resources are getting sucked up, that kind of thing. Uh, nice thing about scope though, you can go over here. If you see this little filter bar, you don't like to make things really easy to see. But you can click that, you can start customizing your view right here. So right off the back, you can say show only in scope items. Go back, get rid of all that other junk. Uh, on the side here, these are just the requests that have happened. It's start, or, and it's also starting to pass me spider to the site. That's by default. That's not the request. That's just it looking through the source code, pulling things out uh, for what the site has. Proxy, back to this. This is this main window where you're going to capture and see things. Your HTTP history. This is the request your browser's made. Again, it's filled with gibberish. Well, not gibberish, sorry, just jumped from other, other things. Same thing. You can do show only in scope. You can do by status codes, the types, whatever you want. You can do by extensions. It's pretty granular in how you can go. Uh, I usually like to see everything just because I like to see everything. So now you can look here. The request is saved. I'll go back to the one more interesting. Here's your request. You got headers. You can look at in hex too if you like. Uh, useful for non printable characters. Uh, then this is a response from the from the application. So you can go ahead and see all the code that came back. And <coughs> it's a lot. Uh, WebSockets, I won't worry about that for now. Options, talked about this a little bit earlier already. Next tab up here, 
spider. So Burke has a built-in spider. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to go out there and actively try to map the site for you. Uh, you can already see it has 81 quests or 81 requests queued up. That's just from the little bit of browsing that I did. It pulled those links. Uh, you can clear the queues out, but if you decide you want to proxy it, uh, it's really easy just to go back over here, double click on this guy, or right click on him, I'm sorry, and say spider the host. And the spider's going to take off and do its thing. And you'll notice this thing is growing. This is a form. Bert found a form. It wants to get permission before it submits it. Uh, be very careful of this. If you have login forms and you let this thing go, uh, you'll lock yourself out probably pretty quick. Or you might just upset your client with a ton of a ton of login requests. So I just ignore the form for now. Uh, you can go into settings and set a bunch of defaults for that form if you want something specific to it. Again, this is the default Kali, so it's just whatever default is set up. You drop this down, you can kind of, just kind of start to see your map of the site. And you see they found WG Admin, WG Content. Well, now you know it's a WordPress site, so there you go. So where does Spider pull its data from? The site itself. So it's just going through and it's using any link that follows it. And when you go into the Spider over here, you can go into Options, and you can tell, like, well, it's going to check robots.txt, uh, but you can tell it how deep to go, parameterized URL, pass the spidering is on by default. Uh, here's where your form submission is. As you let's see, your default is Peter Winter. You can go ahead and change all that information if you would like. I probably would recommend that if you actually used it. But uh, I personally never use that. I don't like forms being submitted uh, for me. Uh, <coughs> you guys just check that. Uh, next up, scanner. This is your big miss with uh, the free version. The scanner does not work. Uh, it's pretty much a vulnerability scanner type of thing, but it is extremely useful if you want to just quick find things like SQL injection, cross site scripting, request forgery. Uh, it's, it's very good. Uh, one thing, can't really see it, but if you, have a pay, if you ever get the paid version or whatever, be extremely careful with the scanner. There's two options. There's auto scan and then manual scan. If you turn on auto scan, it will auto scan every request that happens. Every parameter it sees. Uh, I've seen plenty of new people take down sites with that, where they are unaware that it's going to happen. And Burp will queue up 50 requests to scan, and one page has 120 parameters. It's going to scan each one of those. Each on a typical scan, one parameter will get about 200 requests. Uh, I find it useful because if you, when you're dealing with things like SQL injection or cross-site scripting, you can manually do everything this thing does, but it's just a lot quicker to do all the encoding for me, that sort of thing. Different ways to bypass it. Uh, intruder. I'll get into this in a little bit. We'll do a walkthrough of this. Same with repeater. We will do a little walkthrough of the view too. Uh, the rest of these tabs, well, sequencer, I'll ignore this for now. If we do a more advanced one later, I can get into what sequencer does. Decoder, this is just a nice, easy, like, base 64 decoder if you want to use it. If you come over here, you can see that uh, it captures something else. But if you actually just highlight some text, let's say this was base 64 encoded, you can right click, send to decoder, it'll drop it over there for you, and you can tell it to decode as plain URL, HTML, base64. Uh, obviously, that's not going to work because that's not base64. But it's a nice little decoder. I don't know if it's, it doesn't have any very advanced options, anything like that. Uh, compare. It lets you compare two requests or two responses. So if you're doing login attempts and you've got a failed login, let's say you do one with a failed user account and it's one with a failed password, they look the same to you. You might want to run it to compare because sometimes you can still tell the difference some little bit of response changed. And then you can do some username enumeration type thing. Uh, extender I talked about with the store. Project options, there's a lot of stuff here. I won't worry about these things for right now. Same with user options and alerts. Alerts are just your warnings if things go wrong or if there's updates, you'll, they'll pop up here. And you can notice that whenever a tab gets activated or anything happens to it, Burp does highlight it. So the proxy was highlighted orange. So I'm going to ignore this request. So when you, uh, with the project file, is it just saving the, uh, what you set up here, or is it actually saving the requests and the responses as well? The project file will save everything, but uh, it'll save everything, but like if you have a bunch of intruder tabs open, it will not save those. Okay. 
But if you have a lot of repeater tabs open, it will save all of those. And I'll explain more of that here in a second when I send one to it. So is there a way to save everything using the intruder tab without? Intruder tab, no. Intruder tab is one of the things that uh, typically your best bet is to send it to repeater first and mess with it there a little bit, and then you would send it to intruder. Do your version checks. Okay. I want to make sure I. Oh, another thing really fast. Once you're set up and going through the proxy, if you're, if you're testing an SSL site, you're going to get a warning that your cert's not valid because it's Burke's certificate in the way. Uh, you can go to this, just type in HTTP colon slash slash burp. You're going to get this pretty page. Right up here's your certificate. You can go ahead and download that, install it in your browser, and then you'll, that little warning will go away. Uh, that's just more of a nuisance thing. But this site's HTTP, so it won't matter. Uh, let me see if I can make sure it covered everything else. Uh, a couple other things, nice things with Burp. There are, like I said, there are some limits. The other big limit is throttling. If you use Intruder to do a bunch of requests, which I'll show you soon, uh, it does throttle that. Uh, you can't go all out. There's a few ways around it, if you want, not in the tool itself, but you can use Burp, since it is just a proxy, you can use it with other tools. I run most of my command lines through it. So if you're familiar with tools like SQL Map, uh, your uh, uh, Dirt Search, uh, GoBuster, those kind of things, I'll typically run those through Burp also, just so I have a record of it. And I, again, like to see the request and response. I don't always trust uh, that Dirt Search is gonna report on everything the way I wanna see it. So, Anything else I need to cover? Okay, so just to show you a little bit of an example of how Burp can work and how you can find some stuff with it, this is, like I said, this was Hack the Boxes thing, so this was actually one of their challenges uh, for the capture the flag. Uh, you get this pretty much just plain sight here. Uh, but if you go down here, you can kind of start to see some things like here's a post, hello world. You click on that. Oh, there's, this is Firefox. Don't worry about. Oh, this is uh, yeah, safe browsing Firefox. Don't ignore that. Here's the request that just happened when I clicked that "Hello World." So now you know the URL it's going to, and then this stuff is all just standard things that are always in every request that happens. Uh, when it comes back, now you're looking at the source code as, or, the, or the, the source of the response. You can just see the code that comes back. It's 200. And, you, and a lot of times you start to see like comments. Sometimes they're sensitive, sometimes they're not. Uh, a lot of times it's just different style sheets. If you pay for the pro version, Burp will go through and pull all comments for you. Uh, yes, I have seen passwords in comments, not in just CTS, but in real world. Uh, developers sometimes like to make it easy for you. Uh, you just click forward at the top to forward that on. And now this is a this is actually a request made by the application because it's using some avatars, but I don't actually care to see that again. Uh, that's not in scope. Now you can see that this is what that sort this is what that response looks like now when your browser renders it. Uh, so playing in the site, you see some job listing link. I'll go ahead and follow this. Again, you see the request, or you see the response. You get to hear pretty basic things. Pen tester, hey, this job looks cool. Who doesn't want to be a pen tester, right? You click the apply now button. Now the pen test, as an app, it was a web app tester, the first thing that I noticed on this that always intrigues me is anytime I see a number. I love numbers and URLs, cookies, whatever, especially when they're just like low numbers like that. So, one thing that I already know is that I'm probably gonna to wanna to play with this a little bit to see what else is available. You right click on this, and you send it to repeater. You can also do quick keys. I'm not doing that though, since you can see what I'm doing. Uh, but I'll forward this on, that's the response. Come over to my browser to see what it looks like, and this is what it looks like, okay. But, like I said, the number, you can still see up here, I like numbers. So first thing I always do is I decrement it by one just to see if I can get somewhere else. See the response? Ah, register. So 
That's something I didn't see on the first page. So now there, I can already tell they let me go somewhere else. Click this, just to see where it takes me. And we're back to this. It looks like I can register for the site, but that's not what I really want to look at. It's still interesting right now. Now, I sent that earlier request, I sent it to Repeater. Repeater pretty much just lets me re repeat a request over and over again all at once. So this is the original request that happened. I can go ahead and say go to send it, and I see that response. Now, I can remember that the title of that post was Pen Tester. I can see it right there. So now, I can just go up here and edit this, make that a seven, hit go, and there's my next request with register. So I could sit here and type in all the numbers I wanted to do, but that's tedious. Uh, in this example, that's too bad, but in a real world example, where sometimes I have like nine digits, and I want to like randomize it, this will come in handy. So I'll go back to my original request, just because I know it. I can send it over here to this thing called Intruder. <clears throat> Intruder is pretty much it's a t an attack tool from Burp. So right off the bat, your first tab, it's just, this is just the target. This is all pre-populated. Uh, that's the IP address, the port. If you're doing a web app test, you're likely going to see URLs or whatever. Uh, but here's positions. Positions are where you're picking things that you want to manipulate in automated requests. Typically, Burp actually does auto finding of things for you. So if you have things like cookies in your request, if you have parameters, Burp would actually automatically highlight those for you. But since this is in the URL, you Burp does not automatically find it. However, this is what I want to manipulate. So I select it. You come over here and you click the Add button. And you get these, I don't know what those things are called. If anybody knows what they're called, that would be wonderful. They look like, I don't know. But that's how it marks it. So, and it used to be orange, and then the new version is green now. I think that's green. I'm slightly colorblind. But. Is it the double S's? It's, yeah, I don't know what it's called. But that's, it's the Burp, it's the burp uh, intruder marker. That's what it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> like technical term. Is it like an S with a circle? In Maybe. The I'll tell you this you can't type it. You've got to use that add button. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sorry, I'm gonna try it hard enough. <laughs> okay, I can just correct that. Somebody will probably figure out how to type the damn thing and send me something. But okay, so you can mark that, and then you have these things called attack types. These are the four attack types that Burp offers. To be honest, 99% of my time, I'm using Sniper. That means it's uh, you're just doing one payload, pretty much. Uh, the other attack types, I'm actually going to leave out for now. I can talk about another time uh, if we do another one of these that's more advanced. Just know that. Uh, Sniper is going to just target that one payload, that one marker with whatever I tell it to. So that's going to be the next tab. This is your payloads. Uh, these are your payload types. These are default by Burp. They have things like simple lists. You can just load up a list, your directory listing, whatever you want. Like you can do Durbuster with this. If you're on the free version, don't. It'd be very, it'd be very painful with the throttling. Uh, but I'm actually just going to do numbers. And I'm sorry, you can also see there are dates, uh, character blocks, null payloads, username generator, uh, lots of things there. But I'm just going to do numbers. So I'm going to go this from 0 to 20, and I want to step one at a time. I'm doing, it does offer random. I use that if I'm using a lot of numbers, but for this, just sequential is fine. Uh, this isn't really an issue. This is how many numbers it's going to be, and I hate first all the time. Don't tell them that. They get really mad if you complain about it. So that's the big thing. You can see the examples here. I want to make sure there's no, no decimals. For the most part, I won't do that. But then the other nice thing is now you have this options tab. And the thing I'm going to focus on here is you can extract things from the responses automatically in the, in the test. So I already pointed out that the number eight was a pen tester. Number seven was a register. So I'm going to add. And it pulls up the response for you. So this is the response that was to my request. If this is ever blank for you, just hit refresh for response. It'll make the same request pull back. And now, I mean, you could type it in if you wanted to, but I'm just going to go down what I want. And I want this text. And Burp auto completes for me what it needs to be. So hit OK. Scroll up here to start the attack. And this is your warning that you're using the freebie, that you're going to be throttled. But luckily for 20 requests, it's not a big deal. 
and you start to see the requests. Okay. Just status there, right? Huh? Just the status there, right? <coughs> this is the, the bar at the bottom. How many requests you had? <laughs> <laughs> right, this is good. So, your status here, your error, timeout, length, and then that this this application. That's that thing that I said to pull out. That was what the that was the part of the response that I wanted to see. Uh, these are all sortable, so I just sort about I just care about what came back to me. So you got cube, and that is, and then so if you want to hit down the bottom to see the request, you can also see the response. If you want to see what that looks like in your browser, you can also just right click, copy URL. If you ever don't want to capture things, you just turn it off, and it'll just keep flowing. And it'll keep logging things in uh, history, but you don't have to keep sending forward it. And look, there's cube. So that you can see the difference there. Obviously, what looks the most interesting always is, of course, hack access granted. Uh, I've never seen that on a real. I've never seen that on a real pen test. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody ever wants to put that in. Uh, so, this one you might want to play with it. So you can actually right click again. You can send it to the repeater, and it goes over to the repeater. So this is that request. So actually, one of the this actually I used Burp for years before I knew you could do this. One of my favorite things is you can double click up in this tab and you can name it. I spent years not knowing that until by accident. <laughs> that, <laughs> this awesome. is excellent. So usually at the end of a test, I'll have like rows of these things. So you can write, you can send a request again, and you can see that was the that was the text we captured that we were pulling off that that uh, intruder attack. So that's probably the one you want to see. Go ahead and copy. You can also you can just copy URL somewhere. And there you got it. So that's something you probably want to play with a little bit more. Uh, if you go to it, oh, not found. That kind of sucks. Uh, let's see here. So now uh, another step. Now I was talking about before how you could run tools through Burp just because you want to. Avoid that throttling, like I mentioned. So here, I was going to just show you really quick. Uh, now this is Dura Search. I like Dura Search. Some people like GoBuster. Some people like DuraBuster. It's just a file directory brute forcer for web stuff. Uh, but most tools you look at, uh, pick your flavor, will have this option somewhere in there. So then I'm just telling it to use my local proxy, and I'm going to do. I have a very custom word list of like. 10 things, just for example purposes. That's your URL, and uh, if you don't use Durbus, or if you don't use uh, DuraSearch, don't worry about that at the end, that's just some extension stuff. But if you wanna see, go through Burp, we'll go back over here, I got that attack. Go to your history. So this is the last request that I made through the browser. So if I hit okay here, it's got, this is taken off. You can see the things here. If you come back over to Burp, there you go. You can see it's recording it all for you also. And then you can start going down. A lot of 404s, 301, crack, crack, crack. I did not make this list, I just took the I just took part of it. So you can kind of see, and that's the end. So and these are actually these codes you can see match up over here. Let me see here. Like WP admin. That's a 302. You can see there's your 302. So now you know what it saw. Uh, if you just want to keep messing with the whole CTF thing just to see where it takes you, I can tell you the steps. <laughs> if you, as you get used to web app testing, you start to kind of notice a few things. Earlier in testing, it, that's nice thing for the history, you can go back and you can notice that they like to do things by date. And then if you know WordPress, you know the contents is always nice. So we'll copy that, put that over here. 
and we get a forbidden. Okay. One nice thing to do really fast is just, just change it a little bit to see what your response is to something else, and we get not found. That's always nice to see because now I have a differentiator of what really exists and what doesn't exist. Even though I'm forbidden from it, it at least gave me enough information to know that something exists. When I go back over to this history, I said I like dates. I'll pull up this request. Let's just copy off this, just see what gets me. You can see in BERT, it's coming back not found. I'll turn that off for now, so it doesn't really matter. No, not found not much fun. Let's just go back one. Still not found, go back one more. Ah, uh, now I'm forbidden. So now I've got something to work with. So if I go back to my history, oh no, I'm sorry, I'll go back to my repeater. And hacker X is granted is what they chose to title this thing. Or maybe that didn't work. So one of the things that I like about Burp Repeater is it's a little bit easier to type things in for me and keep a record. So we'll just send it over here really quick, just like so I did it in Repeater. So here we go. Was well, not found. We can see that. Now at this point in time, you can do multiple things. You can send it back to Intruder run through a bunch of different file extensions if you wanted to, see what different responses are. Uh, you can also just type some in now. TXT, that could work. Uh, let's see, anybody else like other file extensions? PDF. PDF. No, oh, not PDG. Zip. You can remap your keys at home just so you know, so they don't match up to this. And I think. Doc. No. Very good. There we go. Yeah. Always like to see that. You can also just, if you don't want to do the copy URL thing, or if you already have cookies set up, where you want to use the cookies from, from Burp and not from yourself, that's where this matters. So, in the original session, if you were to have cookies here, it'd pull the cookies from here. If you do in my brow in my current browser session, it'll take the browser from your cookie and use them. In this, it doesn't actually matter because there are no cookies. Then you get this awesome URL to copy. But Burp knows what to do with it. There you go. <laughs> so that's your that, there's your there's your next step after that. I won't go to the next step if that's off of Burp that's in the second hockey. So, but let me see here, that's it for me, I think. So besides like the documentation, what other resources would you recommend? Are there online communities or? Uh, yeah, I mean, Burps, if you go to their website, they have an excellent forum <coughs> to talk about things. The uh, their guy, I can't pronounce his last name, but uh, they're very, he's very responsive and set up the things. If you go into the forum and post questions, uh, I've had probably multiple uh, bug talks with him on things. Uh, and there is no shortage of tutorials on Burp. Uh, it, it, it is probably, I mean, the most used proxy you're going to find. Uh, I mean, OWASP has theirs. Uh, that the Zap is an attack proxy. Uh, some people like that. Uh, for my workflow, uh, it doesn't work for me. Uh, but yeah, you won't find any shortage of things to do. And like I said, there's much more advanced things you can do. I didn't get into that here. But if you're ever dealing with a web application that has cross-site request forgery tokens, you can set up uh, ways to always pull that first before you issue a request. Uh, there's macros for that. There's macros to make sure you're always logged in. Uh, one quick warning to people, because only because I see this happen to new users. I gotta find it really quick. There, Burp keeps a thing called a cookie jar. There it is. And it's, so it saves cookies. I don't know if I'm gonna have any or not. Open I do have some cookie jars, some cookies. It saves these things off. And it will use them in Spider and Scanner by default. You can change that to use it in other things as well. If you are writing up somebody and saying that they're 
their log their logout function doesn't work, or you have uh, some kind of authentication authorization vulnerability. Make certain that your burp is not reusing cookies that are valid. Uh, I've seen that done before. People write somebody up for uh, an auth end vulnerability, and no, they just didn't know that their cookies were still being reused. <laughs> That's more advanced, but I'm going to say it just in case anybody dabbles in that stuff. I've seen it done. So that's just sort of like the quick intro. Uh, I probably went over time, but any questions? Huh? That's it.